It's a meat eater podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Brody Henderson, Giannis Putellis, Chester Floyd, Randall Williams, Mackenzie Elmquins, Hansi Deschermeyer, and Logan Dove. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there's a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. For the stat of the week this week, we're looking at average points per game. You guys have a guess as to who leads us in average points per game. Brody. Brody. Yep. Number one. They're in agreement that it's Brody. The leaders are Randall and Brody, who average 6.7 points per game. That's mm. followed by Tony Peterson oh. with 6.5. Steve Rinello with <laughs> 6.3, Tyler Jones and Giannis with 6.0, and Cal with 5.5. The average score for all Meat Eater Trivia players is 4.1. Hmm. Back I, in the I, old I, days, <clears> like, 67% was the, like a D. Like back in, back I, in grade school. Now you can win uh, <laughs> I feel like it still is. Still in the modern days, <laughs> it is. I've got feedback uh, from the board game. Uh, two different people in the last week that okay. got it for Christmas and uh-huh. then played it since. And uh, both said that it was hard. Oh. <laughs> well, in a few years, we hope to have a kid's version, um, which would be all multiple <laughs> choice. And so if, if folks felt like that was hard, maybe that would be more than Were, you, were these two people uh, children or should they be insulted by that situation? Is there any <laughs> chance you'd ever include the flavor text? On the card? Uh, That's something I heard, too. People yeah, are missing um, flavor text. Honestly, no. It, it's <laughs> like that like too triples much? it triples the amount of work at some point. So to come up with 10 questions is one thing. To come up with 10 questions that each have a paragraph of flavor text, um, that like triples what I need to put into it. So no. You, you Listen, if you're a consumer, you can choose between having like 800 questions with no flavor text or like 300 questions with flavor text. I think if I was them... I would pick the 800 questions. Yeah, at that point, you're writing an encyclopedia. That's right. Pretty much. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. w- or Spencer, we played with the family over mm-hmm. over Christmas, and Ike, my brother, mm-hmm. I think on the first one got eight right. Wow. The next one, he almost had a perfect game. He Whoa. got nine. He kicked wow. all of our butts. Okay, let us know next time Ike is in town. Yep. We'll uh, get him a seat in the trivia room. Would he like to come and play? Yeah, he'd play. He's, he's a smart fella. I don't know. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> don't know where it came from. Now, here's our new segment, which is FAQs. If you have a question for our crew related to Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com with the subject line FAQ. Here's what Brent Simmons wants to know. I feel like I have a good idea about what most people do at Meat Eater, but have no clue what role Brody and Randall have besides playing trivia. <laughs> Nobody does. Are they in accounting, writers, <laughs> video editors, maintenance guys, or something else? Listen, this guy needs to pay more attention. <laughs> like, I, I feel like... <clears throat> yeah, Brody, what do you So do? go ahead. And <laughs> that's, <laughs> one. that's really a frequently asked question. Asked question? Uh, no, but it was what I, I one feel person like wrote anyone in. Anyone <laughs> that has listened to the Meat Eater podcast. So, Brody, just go ahead and tell folks what you do. <laughs> um, I'm a writer. I write books with Steve. Mm-hmm. Been doing it for a long time. I think if you even open up our most recent book, the uh, Catch a Crayfish, Count the Stars, you'll see by Stephen Ranella with Brody Henderson. And in there. on the survival books. And same in the thing. Sur- there you go. Yeah. Randall, what do you do here at Meat Eater? Are you a maintenance guy? Uh, no, I'd say Accounting? I, I do the same thing as Brody, um, working on the uh, fight, Meat fight, Eaters fight. American History <laughs> series. It's my primary day job, which- Plug it. By the time of this release, it should be out there wow. and available for sale. goes on sale Tuesday, January 9th, wherever you get your audiobooks. Thank you, Giannis. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're hard at work on volume two. There What's you go, volume Brent. two about? Mountain men. Mm -hmm. Is your secondary day job uh, maintenance or this? (laughs) I wish. I I mean, I had really, you know, I just keep showing up and they tell me different stuff to do and I just Uh keep doing it. There you go, Brent. Brody and Randall work with Steve on our books and audio projects. 
We have some housekeeping to get to. In a previous game of trivia, I told Brody that EHD and blue tongue are different diseases, Ooh. even though people refer to them as the same thing. Brody then asked how they differ, to which I didn't have an answer at the time, but I do now. No, you did have an answer. You said it wasn't worth explaining. Well, I, I, <laughs> I felt like my answer was, um, yeah, it's not, it's not worthy of correcting somebody. If you're talking to a rancher in eastern Montana and he's like, boy, these deer sure got crushed by blue tongue this year, you wouldn't be like, well, actually, let me explain it to you. Here's a quote from the Institute of Agriculture. Quote, Blue tongue and EHD are similar viral diseases spread by biting gnats, which result in similar clinical signs. Blue tongue typically results in severe disease and death in sheep, while cattle have reproductive losses. EHD, on the other hand, affects all ages of deer and is highly infectious and often results in many fatalities. However, EHD in cattle is unusual and the clinical signs are milder than in white-tailed deer. The Montana FWP adds a bit more clarity, saying that EHD has been reported in whitetails, muleys, bighorn sheep, elk, and pronghorn, and that blue tongue has been reported in all of those species, as well as blacktail deer, sheep, cattle, and goats. So, simply put, EHD is more often associated with wild animals, while blue tongue is more often associated with domestic animals. There you go, Brody. Thank you. Very clear. So when we have those big die-offs mm -hmm. that you'll see out east and whatnot or everywhere, it's most likely EHD and not blue tongue. Indeed. Correct. Okay. But again, if you were like talking to a Montana rancher, I wouldn't go out of my way to be like, well, yeah. see here, buddy. Especially if you're trying to get permission. That's exactly <laughs> right, Chester. That's uh, a person you want to be sucking up to. <laughs> now, the Shelby Index for today's round is a four. So our winner should get eight mm. correct answers and with that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? You stand to win everything. Game on, suckers! Question one. The topic is woodsmanship. This first great question comes to us via Tim Brown. Which of these states has the most native species of venomous snakes? Is it Arkansas, Georgia, Nebraska, or Arizona? Topic is woodsmanship. Hansi writing his answer for the whole world to see over here. Which of these <laughs> states has the most native species of venomous snakes? Arkansas, Georgia, Nebraska, Arizona. I do feel like I regress to the mm. elementary school days yeah. of hiding my test answers when mm. I'm playing trivia. Okay, don't trust Chester and Hansi. No, like there. I'm going to get some folders and put them up <laughs> at like the 90 degree angle. There you go. Which of these states has the most native species of venomous snakes? Arkansas, Georgia, Nebraska, Arizona. Is everybody ready? Logan shaking his head no. Randall, are you confident? Not confident in the slightest. Okay. No. Brody, I don't have to ask if he's confident. He does not look it right now. Arkansas, Georgia, Nebraska, Arizona. Is everybody ready? Brody? Does the cobra live in any of those states? Brody? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. I'll stick with it. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying Georgia. Mackenzie saying Georgia. Chester saying Georgia. Brody saying Georgia. The whole room said Georgia. Hmm. The whole room is wrong. Oh. The is correct really? answer is Arizona. Oh. Damn it. Come on. You know, the native saying. descriptor in there kind of gave me a little bit of uh, hesitancy okay. after the fact. What, what, uh, what changed your mind there, Hansi? It seemed like a possibility that Georgia would have a li high likelihood of like mm -hmm. introduced species being in a like temperate, like relatively like temperate. Like cobras and black mambas. Yeah, stuff. like stuff coming out of aquariums. Mm -hmm. People were releasing stuff, like them taking hold. I don't know. Arizona is home to 19 native species of venomous snakes, wow. which is the most in the United States. That's followed by Texas with 15, Alabama with 11, and California, Georgia, New Mexico, and Oklahoma with 10 
Arkansas is home to six, and Nebraska is home to four. Is is Arizona just a bunch of different rattlers? I believe it is. It's mm. uh, every variety of yeah. rattlesnake exists there. Uh, now, if the question didn't have the native descriptor, mm. would the answer have changed? I would imagine you'd see something like uh, a Florida way up there, or a, a Texas already has, you know, 15 native species versus Arizona having 19. I would assume that Texas would then surpass them if you uh, added in the non-native ones. This question was just about the native species. That is a zero percenter, a rare zero percenter on a multiple choice question. I'm going to remember that one though. Question two, the topic is cooking. These three words describe the St. Patrick's Day staple that consists of sausage, potatoes, and onion gravy. The topic is cooking. These three words describe the St. Patrick's Day staple that consists of sausage, potatoes, and onion gravy. Randall is confident. Randall, how much Irish do you have in you? Very little. Okay. Very little. Much to the surprise of many, (laughs) based on my physiognomy. That's a fun word. Yeah. I've never heard that one. Can I get a definition? Uh... You know, someone would probably correct me if I gave a definition, but I believe it's like it refers to generally the expression of your genes as they appear on your, I don't know. These three words describe the St. Patrick's Day staple that consists of sausage, potatoes, and onion gravy. Randall and Yanni are the only ones. I don't know the definition either, but I think yours suffice for me. Yanni and Randall are the only ones who look confident. Now, Brody, you were torn on that last one between yeah, uh, your answer, Georgia, and something just, else. You gotta stop talking. Okay, we're not gonna acknowledge <laughs> Brody. Nobody look at Brody. <laughs> oh. We just had a light. Lights, Phil. We had a light incident. I did that on purpose. Mm. Really? I only keep him on for the light show at the beginning, and um, even then they don't look very impressive. It's funny, <laughs> I've been staring at the light this whole time. Don't do that. Trying to figure out whether or not it was a new thing for me. I was mm. like, why is this so distracting? <laughs> Turns out well, my instinct's go. dead on. Does everybody have an answer for the three words that describe the St. Patrick's Day staple that consists of sausage, potatoes, and onion gravy? Everybody ready? Yanni is grinning. Yanni, you <laughs> like your answer? I I, I feel like it's, a, it's the only dish I okay. know that could fit in. Mackenzie, I think we're waiting on you. Okay. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying um, bangers and mash. Oh, Mackenzie God. saying poutine, poutine, poutine. <laughs> Chester saying beans and mash. Brody saying bangers Dang. and mashers. Logan saying the holy trinity. Giannis saying bangers and mash. Randall saying bangers and mash. The correct answer is bangers and mash. Are we going to give it to Brody, who said mashers? I think we would give it I to him. I think so. Yeah, uh, I think we will. Randall? Gee, thanks. Man, I, is I, it also British? I remember it was it is, from you're, that. you're right that it is British. Now, um, Randall. But the Irish have sort of claimed it is their own. Okay. Uh, I advocated for you getting that answer a couple games back. Oh, I know, I know. And that's why I'm abstaining rather than saying no. <laughs> so we're going to give Brody the point for yeah, saying bangers and mashers. I just ordered this the other day. I you put did. down beans. You are so <laughs> close, Chester. Now, the history of this dish dates back there's, to World War no I. Beans. I know, but <laughs> I couldn't point. think of it. I was like, something with a B. The history of this dish dates back to World War I when meat shortages caused Brits to make sausage links that were disproportionately high in water. Because of the excess moisture, the sausages would pop and hiss when cooked, which Mm. led them to being called bangers. To learn how to make the perfect sausage for bangers and mash, go to TheMeatEater.com and check out Justin Townsend's recipe called Venison Irish Breakfast, Breakfast Sausage. Question three, the topic is hunting. What is the second most popular objective lens size for binoculars at Bass Pro Shops and Shields? Why'd you have to do second? We're not looking for the first most popular. We're looking for the second most popular objective lens size for binoculars at Bass Pro Shops and Shields. Do you think you know first, Mackenzie? Yeah. Yeah. Yanni, you feel good about your answer? Yes, I do. Yanni, when's the last time you had bangers and mash? Hmm. 
I don't know, within two years. Really? What was the occasion? Oh, just make it at home. Now, I don't, I don't make like a special onion gravy, but if I just cook up sausages and mashed potatoes, then I call it bangers <laughs> and mash. I had bangers and mash on December 27th. Oh, so like a week 2023, ago. 2023, yeah. Well, what was the occasion? We're up to dinner at the, uh, the Fainting Goat Pub. Okay. Are they like uh, very specifically Irish? They have, yeah, they have some, some, some Irish themed dishes. Would you have gotten that right if you didn't just order that a week oh, ago? Oh, m- most certainly. Okay. Yeah. Fainting goat. Is that in Missoula? Hey, in Chet, sorry, really quick. I got to put on my electrician's hat and fix that after this show, but can you and Mackenzie share a mic for the rest of the show? Sorry. Thank you. Does everybody have an answer for the second most popular objective lens size? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hanzi saying. 10 by 60, Mackenzie saying 10 by 50, Chester saying 12 by 42, Brody saying 50 millimeter, Logan saying 50 millimeter, Giannis saying 50, Randall saying 50 millimeter. The correct answer is 50. The room did very well. Mackenzie will give it to you. Uh, even though you added in the magnification, you got the right objective lens size. At Shields, there are 67 binoculars available with an objective lens size of 42 millimeters. That's followed by 32 available in 50 millimeters, 25 available in 32 millimeters, and 22 available in 25 millimeters. The objective lens size affects the physical size of the binos and the amount of light they can gather. So you weren't talking about units sold, but what they carry. I would imagine they go hand in hand, uh, but yes, which ones? Their forecasting team is good. That's right. Question (laughs) four. The topic is conservation. This next great question comes to us via Lyle McCormick. The CCC, which was established by Franklin D. Roosevelt, stands for what? The CCC which was established by Franklin D. Roosevelt, stands for what? The room is looking very confident, minus Logan. Brody, Hansi, Randall, quick to answer. You need to tell us what the CCC stands for. Brody, do you have any binoculars in your gear shed that aren't a 42 or a 50 millimeter bino? No, but I'm wanting to get some smaller ones for turkey season. Mm. Some little guys. Because you go. don't really need sure. great big jumbos for that. How about you, Yanni? Anything that's not a 42 or a 50? Yeah, I got an 8 by uh, 25 I believe, that I use for uh, deer stand uh, hunting and turkey hunting. There you go. Some of the sizes I wasn't even aware existed. I know there were uh, 32 or 25s available. Mm-hmm. Remember those little teeny Tascos? Those yeah, are, just yeah. like the straight tube. Yeah. I just when I see yeah. those, I'm like, I don't even know who they're for. Like some specific birders. Who the opera. Are, they're for people who don't want to spend money on binoculars. <laughs> Dude, for tree stand hunting in the Midwest, for and, sure. and when you can't see past the hundred yards anyways, mm-hmm. that's all you need. Oh, I think I have it wrong, but I can't think of another answer. Again, this is question four. We're looking for what the CCC stands oh, for. Oh no, I got it. Oh. Another late one from Giannis. <laughs> Which of those C's are you changing, Yanni? All three of them or just one of them? I guess I think I only have to, I think I only have to change the first one. Change okay. all three. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. Go, go with your gut. <laughs> um, We're waiting on I'm, you, Yanni. I forgot the word. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good attempt, Randall, to distract him. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying Civilian Conservation Corps. Mackenzie saying Captain's Conservation Club. Chester saying Conservation Coalition Commission. (laughs) Really good alliteration. Just great alliteration. That should exist. Brody saying Civilian Conservation Corps. Logan saying Conservation Capitalism C. Giannis saying Civilian Conservation Corps. Randall saying Civilian Conservation Corps. The correct answer is the Civilian Conservation Corps. 
The Civilian Conservation Corps was created in 1933 as a way to help lift America out of the Great Depression. It allowed single men between ages 18 to 25 to enlist in work programs that were designed to improve the country's public lands. Enlisters made $30 per month and had meals and lodging provided. Brody, do you think you'd have been part of the CCC if you were a single man between ages 18 and 25? I probably would have needed the work. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they built a lot of dams and stuff like that. I think a lot of things you look at on our uh, federal lands, you mm-hmm. could probably have something related to the CCC. Yep. To Any cool for. thing that's been blasted into the side of a mountain, <laughs> they probably had a hand in it. And I think of that $30 a month, they had to send 25 back to their family. And it was uh, so they only got like $5 of that to keep around. Question five. The topic is gear. This synthetic rubber that's resistant to oil, heat, and weathering was invented by DuPont chemists in 1931. Topic is gear. This synthetic rubber that's resistant to oil, heat, and weathering was invented by DuPont chemists in 1931. This is question five. We will get a scoreboard update from Phil after this. Randall already has his board down with an answer. Yanni has not picked up his board yet. Randall, you know this one. Uh, I feel okay about it. I wrote down my first best guess, and now I'm working on my second guess, and then I'll weigh the two. This synthetic rubber that's resistant to oil, heat, and weathering was invented by DuPont chemists in 1931. Randall is back to his whiteboard. Brody is covering his face with his whiteboard. Yanni, how do you feel about your answer? I have a good guess. Okay. I'm going to keep working on it. Mm -hmm. Randall keeps writing. Yanni, we recently did some uh, some more kids trivia, which you'll hear later this year. And uh, I think I observed that your daughter, Mabel, liked to watch what the other players in the room <laughs> would do after the answer was read. They wanted to, she wanted to see their confidence and their answer, if they were quick to write down, if they were slow, if they, like, scratched their head. Um, and I said that your dad does the exact same thing. Did you know you do that? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you like to sit there and just drink it all in. Well, yeah, because... It- if they sit there and write for mm-hmm. 10 seconds, then you got a pretty good <laughs> idea. That's a long answer. It's a good hint. <laughs> um, you know, it, what else she was doing is she said uh, they both were pushing to go squirrel hunting. I was mm. like, what's the big interest in going squirrel hunting? She's like, well, I want to go squirrel hunting. But another thing is that last time we did kids trivia, Chester at, or Spencer asked me what I wanted to, what I like to do. And she said that I had said hammocking. She said, that's a stupid answer. It made no <laughs> sense. So this time, when he asked me, I'm going to say, I like to go squirrel hunting, and I want to make sure that I've done it recently so that I'm not fibbing. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Love that. So did you go squirrel hunting yet? We did go squirrel hunting. Uh, the Henderson family and my family mm-hmm. went, and uh, we saw, my crew saw too, I think, Brody's crew saw a few more. We only killed one squirrel on our expedition. Not a lot of movement that day. Mm. So yeah, next time fun. we ask what they like to do in the outdoors, uh, is she still going to say squirrel hunting? or does it like... I expect so. Okay. If she says hammocking again, she's going to beat herself up for a while. <laughs> does everybody have an answer for the synthetic rubber that's resistant to oil, heat, and weathering that was invented by DuPont chemists in 1931? Mackenzie, I believe yes. we're waiting on you. Yep. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying... Uh, Vulcanized. Mackenzie saying neoprene. Pretty Chester sure saying Vibram. <laughs> Brody saying PVC. Logan saying neoprene. Giannis saying PVC. Randall saying silicone. We have a correct answer in the room. It's neoprene. Mm. Hansi Ooh. got it right. Not and me. No. Logan nope. got it. Logan oh, and I'm Mackenzie sorry. got it. Logan and Mackenzie wow. got it right. Well done, Logan and Mackenzie. 
Neoprene was originally used in telephone wires and automobile <laughs> engines and was later turned into gloves and shoe soles. It wasn't until the 1950s when the first neoprene wetsuit was created. About a decade later, the modern wetsuit was invented when elastic nylon was added to the neoprene. Phil, we're halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. We've got Chester Floyd in last place with zero points. Mackenzie, Logan, and Hansi all have two points apiece and all tied up in first place. Brody, Giannis, and Randall, they all have three points. Now the PBC answer, I, I don't, I don't uh, blame you boys uh, because I make the Meat Eater Trivia universe pretty wide, but what did you think that was related to uh, Meat Eater Trivia, that PBC would be an answer? Why does it have to do with anything to do with meat eater trivia? You have questions yeah. all the time that have nothing That's, to do with meat eater yeah, trivia. Yeah, what kind of question is that? <laughs> question six. <laughs> the topic is conservation. And this next great question comes to us via John But Schlesinger. I get what you're getting at. The neoprene mm-hmm. makes sense now. Yeah. Ambergris, which is a waxy substance that's sometimes used to make perfume, is produced by this animal. How specific, Spencer? You don't need to be specific. No. Oh. <laughs> if you think the but answer I, I is, think it should be, uh-huh. because it's... <laughs> Ambergris, which is a waxy substance that's sometimes used to make perfume, is produced by this animal. Brody is confident. Hansi, you have this one right? Randall, you have this one. Very right? much arguing yes. in favor of specificity. But Brody, th- yeah, you're throwing me off with that though, so I don't think it wouldn't I'm matter, Brody. Right. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. It might for you, something. You though. you know how specific you need to go, Randall. Huh? Brody, just, Brody just wants advantage. to separate the wheat from the chaff. That's here. right. That's unless <laughs> I'm yeah, unless and I'm and I would totally I'll make base. an argument after this that <laughs> makes you my don't, case even better. You don't need to be that specific. Ambergris, which is a waxy substance that's sometimes used to make perfume, is produced by this animal. Yanni, you got a chance to observe the room in their writing down of answers. Did that help you any? No. Okay. I think your question gives some hints. Mm. I think you should check your pronunciation, too. Mm. Oh, okay. You think uh, the S should be on there? I'm just saying, check it. Okay. That's well, one how, of those, how would you pronounce it? Yeah, do you have the correct one? That's uh, one of those words I've never heard spoken, have only read. I, 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 could, think, I could be wrong. I think I'm right here, but I, I can check for you uh, while we do this. Maybe uh, fill us in with some brand, banter there, Yanni. Uh, Brody, does this animal live in a place <laughs> that both of us has, have fished of the same name? <laughs> what? <laughs> here, here uh, Google is going to tell us how to pronounce it. Ambergris. Ambergris. You're right, Brody. I thought it was ambergris. Ambergris, which is a waxy substance that's sometimes used to make perfume, is produced by this animal that is spelled A-M-B-E-R-G-R-I-S. Spencer, you've had um, AI, like chat GPT, come up with, you know, poems and Mm -hmm. things before. Would you ever have like like an AI play trivia with us? I feel like that'd be kind of... Oh, oh so we, we've had somebody write in about this okay. before, and uh, trivia has like a 90... Or excuse me, AI, chat GPT specifically, gets like 95% of answers correct. Mm. Um, the category it struggled with the most was hunting, I believe. Um, that was where it had a batting average of like 70%. Mm. Everything else, cooking, conservation, fishing, was nearly 100%. Uh, now here, this says Webster says you can pronounce it ambergris or ambergris. So there we go. Either way will work. Looking to confirm your checkmate. Uh, bias there. <laughs> Does everybody have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We oh. have Hansi saying whale, Mackenzie saying beaver, Don't Chester it. saying otter, Brody saying sperm whale, well, Logan whale. saying whale, Giannis saying turtle, Randall saying whale. The correct answer is sperm whale or just whale. Ambergris, or floating gold, is created when secretions form around squid beaks in the intestines of sperm whales. The Endangered Species Act prohibits people from collecting or selling ambergris because it's considered part of a protected animal. The largest ambergris ever found weighed 220 pounds and was worth about $3 million. 
Yeah, the only thing that threw me off in the phrasing of this question was the the present tense. And I was beginning to doubt myself. Like if it had Explain. said if it had said like which has historically been used to make perfume. So it's it's uh still used in some, but only like the most expensive of perfume. And where and I, do they I, I think it's used in like the preservation Black of the market. scent <laughs> and it's less about the scent itself. Gotcha. Uh, it's more about like making it long lasting. Mm. So uh, when you spray it on yourself, you're still going to smell it the next day. To gotcha. answer your question, Giannis, yes. Yeah. Ambergris K. Key. However you, K or key. <laughs> Please. K? They must have been a huge trafficker. They in, were. In they, that that's why. That's why. What, what are you talking about there, Brody? I'm not, not familiar. In Belize, there's an island called Ambergris K or mm. Key, however you want to pronounce it. And it was a British, British colonized Belize. And ambergris was a big reason why they were there. Mm. Yeah, finding one of those could change your life if it was uh, legal to keep. Question seven, the topic is biology. Fertility is a synonym for this nine-letter word, which is defined as, quote, an animal's ability to produce a lot of babies. The topic is biology. Brody and Randall already have an answer. Mackenzie is joining them. Fertility is a synonym for this nine-letter word, which is defined as an animal's ability to produce a lot of babies. Nine, baby. Nine can I, letters. Can I give a hint to people who don't know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a word Steve I was going to say, it's one of Steve's yeah. favorite words yeah. that oh, he, he yeah. feels very okay. proud of whenever he, he uses okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if that helped anybody, though, who... Uh, I feel like it's a fair hint. ...didn't already know it. It is. That's a good one. And he doesn't slide over it. He hits no, it. Really. Yeah. He looks you in the eye. <laughs> you heard me use that word, right? Yeah, I did. Chester, did that help you at all? No. Steve uses a lot of words to be I just fair. cannot think today. <laughs> Efficacy instead of efficiency. You know, it's like that. Does everybody have an answer for this question, which is question seven? Fertility is a synonym for this nine-letter word, which is defined as, quote, an animal's ability to produce a lot of babies. Um, it's not the same thing, too, but I love his pronunciation of bagel. <laughs> and vague. <laughs> when he's, and vague, yeah. <laughs> bagel. We shouldn't, be, ba we shouldn't yeah. be attacking him behind his back. Come on. He also uh, <laughs> goes out of his way to, say, to, this show. to yeah. say Teddy Roosevelt instead of Roosevelt. Um, which is yeah, the, I feel like that's fair though. That's correct, right? Yeah. I don't know. I I just uh, I noticed that he hammers that one. Um, like he mm -hmm. wants you to know that he that knows. he intentionally said it. He read somewhere that the family mm. prefers Roosevelt. Hmm. Does everybody have an answer Hold on, for I gotta question? Count, I got to count my, my letters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. Okay. You have this one right, Mackenzie? I'm just going to erase no, one. And, uh, my, we'll I knew mine. my first one was wrong. I knew it was wrong, but it got me to the second one. Is everybody ready? I'm just writing something. Go, Sorry. go <laughs> ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying fecundity. Mackenzie oh, saying oh fruitful. Chester without an answer. Brody saying fecundity. Logan saying procreate. And he uh, drew out like hangman little <laughs> dashes to make sure he hit nine letters. Giannis saying fecundity, Randall saying fecundity, the correct answer is fecundity. Fecundity rates are often tied to parental care. So animals with a high fecundity rate produce a lot of offspring, but put very little energy into raising them. An, ex an example of this is a trout, and animals with a low fecundity rate produce few offspring, but put a lot of energy into raising them. An example of this is an elephant and some humans. <laughs> Question eight. The topic is public lands. What is the only national park in Oregon? Oh. This is question eight. The topic is public lands. Randall is quick to come up with an answer. What is the only national park in Oregon? We will get a scoreboard update after this. Have you ever been here, Dr. Randall? I have not. I have not. Is it near... <laughs> <laughs> California and Washington? Yes. 
what is the only national park in Oregon? Oh. Hans, do you have an answer? But is it oh. closer to... <laughs> <laughs> I do, but Randall's... That, that, that makes me change my thought a little bit. <laughs> really? Uh, what if I had used the Pacific Ocean in <laughs> Idaho? <laughs> now he's just flexing his geography uh, muscle. Oh. Hansi, do you think you've been to this place? If it's what I have written down, I've been there, but um, <laughs> what? I don't think... <laughs> What is the only <laughs> national park in Oregon? Oregon feels like a place should, that should have like a half dozen national parks. That's what that was just thinking. It's such a beautiful state. Mm -hmm. and it's only got one national national park. It's yeah. crazy. Mm. Oh my gosh. Brody is frustrated. Yeah, just keep talking. I'll come up with The hat is low. <laughs> The hat is low and the board is high. Currently, he currently looks like, is it a home improvement? What's the neighbor's name? Wilson? Yeah, Wilson. He currently is doing the Wilson look mm. over there. <laughs> Logan, do you have an answer? I do, but it's probably not right. Okay. And you just made me think of uh, flashbacks to home improvement. I was watching a lot of Tim Allen stuff over the holidays. Really? Yeah. Like what? Well, isn't Santa he, Claus? He's, he's kind of put it. Yeah, he's oh. like, like the main. I was thinking of some of his newer Santa work. Claus oh, no, no, things. No. I was thinking yeah. of some of his more recent projects. No. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, did you like uh, Home Improvement? Oh, yo, yeah. We're big, big can, home improvement. A lot of the, sound effects. Like, can, uh, yeah. I was just going to ask if you could hit that one more time. Everyone be quiet. <laughs> that was too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Phil went cross eyed when he did that. He had to reach down deep to make that Tim Allen noise. The second one was better, by the way, too. No. Oh, oh, grunt to it. <laughs> that, was, that was bad. I can't do it. It's like, oh. a, it's like a grunt and a slide whistle yeah, at once. Right. Yeah. Doing those is like a cigarette. It takes like 11 minutes off your life. Uh, <laughs> and you, oh, try no. to, you try to hit one of those. I wish I knew that when I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> what is the only national park I think Tim Allen would be long gone if that was the case. In Oregon. <laughs> Well, he did a lot of cocaine, I think, in the 80s that offset it. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's, as you know, adds minutes to your yeah, life. Yeah, let me do the math. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. it's good. <laughs> Does everybody have an answer? Brody? Go ahead. Yanni? Go ahead sure. and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying Smith Rock. Mackenzie ah. saying Crater Lake. Chester saying Sequoia. Brody saying fossils, Logan saying redwoods, Giannis saying Hell's Canyon, Randall saying Crater Lake. We have a correct answer in the room. It's Crater Lake National Park. Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the United States at nearly 2,000 feet deep. It lies inside the collapsed remnants of an ancient volcano known as Mount Mazama. Biologists believe there are no native fish to the lake, but it does have kokanee salmon and rainbow trout that were stocked there about 100 years ago. Isn't Crater Lake the one with the giant log that's floating? That perpendic is the old man of Crater Lake. Okay. Posted yeah. about wow. that on Instagram before. Uh, it's a very old piece of driftwood that stays perfectly buoyant. It's similar to a glacier where you only see like 10% of it on the surface. It moves around the lake. Scientists tried to study it once before and they uh, chained it up to like an island. And then a huge storm hit. Um, so it was believed that it was bad luck to try to um, contain the old man of Crater Lake. So they just let him drift after that. Um, there's like some algae on him that's only observed in that spot. Did you guys uh, rehearse this? No, I'm, I, I just, I really like, I have aspirations to go to Crater Lake later this year and I'd love to see the old man. Uh, so we'll uh, see. I think the island is called like Merlin Island or Wizard Island. It's a cool name. Oh, Phil the engineer, give us a scoreboard update. Chester, McKenzie, and Logan have been eliminated from the game. Uh, Logan and McKenzie have three points though. So that's, that's nice. Giannis and Hansi have four points apiece. Brody has five. <laughs> and in first place is Randall with six points. Question nine. What is the that topic intonation there? It's haunting. <laughs> <laughs> I put more enthusiasm into your name than anyone else's. <laughs> Question nine. The topic is haunting. What holiday was the blizzard of 1940 that killed 85 Midwestern duck hunters? I feel like I know this. What holiday was the blizzard of 1940 that killed 85 Midwestern duck hunters? Brody, you have this one right? Yeah, I do. He appears to be the only one with any confidence. What holiday was the blizzard of 1940 that killed 85 Midwestern duck hunters? 
No, is this a real holiday or is this like Arbor Day? <laughs> Why don't you like Arbor Day? You got Mandel? something against trees? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just well, did we had a tiebreaker once about Arbor Day? We I did. Think indeed. It was, and you were about four months off. We did the indeed. Correct answer. Yeah. So uh, Randall is the only person on <clears throat> earth who is taking a stance against Arbor Day. He is anti Arbor Day. Don't come after me. This is question nine. What holiday was the blizzard of 1940? That killed 85 Midwestern duck hunters. Is everybody ready? Randall has erased his entire board. Did you change your mind or do you just need to uh, write in prettier Mm. handwriting? I don't know. I'll just write. Here we go. Mackenzie, are you ready? Yes. What? Now explain what's going oh, on here again, on. Randall. <laughs> Randall has totally erased his board for a second time. Is Now, is this answer going to be your first answer, or is it a, your third answer? It's my first answer, and I don't like it. Okay. But I didn't like the other one either. <laughs> Mackenzie? Just guess a holiday. I, just, I realized I, I said something really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hansi saying Columbus Day. Mackenzie saying President's Day, Chester saying Christmas, Brody saying What's Armistice that? Day, Logan saying Armistice Day, Giannis saying Armistice, Randall saying President's Day. The correct answer is Armistice Day or Veterans Day. Prior to 1954, it was Armistice Day, but if you said Veterans Day, we would give you credit mm. for that. Mm. The blizzard unexpectedly hit the upper Midwest on the afternoon before Armistice Day, which caused hundreds of duck hunters to get stranded on the water. The storm brought two feet of snow, 80 mile per hour winds, and a 30 degree temperature swing. It's estimated the blizzard killed 210 people, 65 of which were sailors on Lake Michigan. For more on this story, read my article on TheMeatEater.com called Armistice Day, the day 85 duck hunters died. Phil, we have one question left. Who is left in the game? Uh, we have three players left in the game. Giannis has five points, so he can technically catch up. And then tied up are Randall and Brody with six points. Question 10. The topic is fishing. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Adam McQuery. For sending this great question, Adam is going to get a board game signed by the crew. If you want a chance to win our listener question of the week, then send your question to trivia at themeateater.com. What fish has a magnolia hybrid that's created when crossing a white species with a black species? The room is stumped. This is our final question. We would need Giannis to get this right, Randall and Brody to get this wrong to go to a three-way tiebreaker, or we could just have Brody and Randall get it right. They would go to a tiebreaker. We could have them get it wrong, Yanni get it wrong, and they would just go to a tiebreaker. A lot of options to go this to an 11th question. one of those question. man-made jobbies. Not going to help you out there. What fish has a magnolia hybrid that's created when crossing a white species with a black species? Yanni, how do you feel about your answer? I might have to argue that okay. it's correct. Okay. I think you're headed the right direction, Giannis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So make for an exciting finish to the game. <laughs> it w- yeah, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't be a game of trivia without this. What fish has a magnolia hybrid that's created when crossing a white species with a black species? This is question ten. Randall just came up with an answer. How do you feel about it? There's a white species and a black species. Okay. Don't know about this magnolia business. Okay. But. Are you? <laughs> I don't understand. Are you looking for the name of the fish, the like the hybrid, or are you looking for... I'm telling you the hybrid is a magnolia. This would be like if you cross a white lab with a black lab, you would get a magnolia lab. And the answer would be lab. Lab would be the correct answer there. Oh, Mackenzie is throwing gear across <laughs> the room. Tensions are high. <laughs> She really wants to see this three-way tiebreaker come to fruition. I was paid to do that. What fish has a magnolia hybrid that's created when crossing a white species with a black species? 
Brody is hitting that Wilson pose again. <laughs> he's come up with an answer quite yet. We are waiting on him. No, I have an answer. You have an answer. Is everybody else ready? Let's go. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Hanzi saying, what's that say, Hanzi? Roy? Roy. I don't know. Mackenzie saying carp. Chester saying marlin. Brody saying bass. Logan saying koi fish. Giannis saying goldfish. Randall saying crappie. We have a correct answer oh, in the Randall. room. It's crappie. Yep. Randall ah! got it right. Well done, Randall. With seven correct answers, Thank he you. gets the victory. Thank a you. magnolia crappie is created when crossing a female white crappie with a male black crappie. This sterile hybrid was created by the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks in the 1990s. They wanted to have a panfish that could be stocked in small lakes and wouldn't be a threat to take them over. Now, Brody was uh, writing down bass because the species at large is a black bass, but there are white bass that are um, also a species. And he was ready to argue that one of them is a species, one of them is what, probably a, a class or something like that? Is that what you were going to go for? That black bass aren't bass. Mm hmm. But the correct answer was crappie, so Randall's our winner. Now, I, down in Tennessee, in a small region, they call crappie goldfish. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. Swimming gold. Randall, you get to choose where the $500 I'm convinced, <laughs> actually. Let's go. To <laughs> well, okay, even if you get that right, Yanni, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't. Because Randall also got it right. He got seven, you got six. I thought we had one more question. This was question 10. Oh, Boom. Randall, where is the five hundred dollar <laughs> donation from Meat Eater going to go? Um, let's give it to the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance. We haven't done them in quite a while. What do you like about them? Well, uh, goats are cool animals, and they, uh, you know, they sponsor a lot of citizen science field work, and then also support a lot of research. And that you've been part of, right? You've went and done yes. the uh, goat count. Yes, and. Uh, you know, thinking ahead to uh, applications in fall of 2024, I'd really like to have a goat tag in my pocket. So just the, uh, again, it's all about me. I, <laughs> I wasn't planning that, but now uh -huh. it requires some introspection. But I've been thinking about goats a lot lately. <laughs> well done, Randall. I was hoping for a tiebreaker there. Uh, we were primed to have one, but Brody couldn't do it. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs>